you guys reinvented yet? No. <laughs> this is not good. Okay, where are my Italians again? <laughs> Represent! We'll hear some noise from the Italians. Come on. <laughs> Who ever heard of a quiet Italian? Come on. Alright, and my French, my French people, show your pride. Yeah, yeah. Where are my Germans? <laughs> okay, that's where I'm coming. Berlin, next. Who's ready to reinvent? Ready to hear about it? All right. I'm I'm Mickey Turner, as many of you know. I'm the star of the show, right? You know that. And I'm going to introduce my two lovely friends um, who are in the back. Ladies and gentlemen, Isabel Van Rohnham, CEO of Winemaker. Oh, there's no gentleman, so just ladies. Um, where is Carl? Carl? Maybe Carl's coming to the next session. Um, you all know her, you all love her. Ladies, Laurel Holloman. Okay. Um, we're going to start off with some questions that people sent in via Twitter and Facebook. And it's just a few. Um, one question was, who's the funniest? Well, we all know who that is, right? <laughs> Come on. Who's the funniest? Were you funny? I, I was just trying to figure out how to turn this music down. Yeah. I feel like we're all in an elevator. Oh, are, are, you, are, are you, like, cracking on my track? <laughs> <laughs> who's the one who's never on time? Hmm. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Um, who is uh, most disorganized? <laughs> Which one eats the most? Me. <laughs> oh, wait, this is a tie. Yeah, they, yeah. Horses, okay. Um, which one looks the most like Beyonce? Well, <laughs> who is the biggest slacker? Well, probably say me. Right. <laughs> slack. So, those are some of the questions that uh, people sent in. She but, get out of bed till noon. <laughs> yeah, we're up at 6.30. Yeah, yeah, but I'm, uh, I'm up until 5 a.m., okay? So getting up at noon is very relative. So I'm a night out. But she goes to bed like 8 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, so we're going to open it up for questions. Uh, I'm just going to give you a little spiel about why we're here and what we're doing. Um, we're here because we're all in the process of reinventing ourselves professionally, personally, spiritually, all of that. And... Um, just wanted to share, you know, some of our journey with people who wanted to listen. So that's one of the reasons we're here, and we're also, you know, you notice this wall over here. Uh, Laurel's fabulous art, and some of the new stuff down here. Then we have books. Uh, journey, which is my first book. Tomorrow, which is the second book that launches here in Paris. And we got wine, and so we'll be drinking and relating and engaging afterwards. So. Well, first of all, I love how intimate and small this is. So I, if you go back to college when you had like a women's studies class, this is kind of a forum, sort of. So you can say whatever you want and it doesn't leave the room. Uh, what brought you here? Why, why did you decide for Paris? And not um, well, I think, you know, Paris is a very special place to all of us. And um, for me, you know, the book was published here in the south of France. Um, and it seemed like, you know, a perfect opportunity. And we had been planning to do something in Paris together for a while. And it just so happened that everybody's schedules just gelled at the right time. And, you know, I think this place is very special to LL2 because her first art exhibit ever was here. So, um, and she's been here many times before and so have I. And we love the city and we love the wine and, you know, and the cheese and, you know, whatever. <laughs> that was one of the reasons, yeah. Um, I'm pretty much the same for me. I mean, I, I just, ever since I was younger and I first came to Paris, it's just an incredibly special city. It's one of the most beautiful cities in the world, so. 
it seemed uh, like the right fit for all of us. But it's, Isabel got it going. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, Promise Indeed was it's special for the three of us because this uh, probably one of the very first time the three of us together. And right. it's fun. Great meat, great wine, great yeah. art. Uh, I'm say you swan, so on the practical point of view, Paris was very central for people from all over Europe. And uh, I don't know, I mean, we probably have, last time we came was 12 different nationalities. I mean, there are definitely yeah. French people, German people. I mean, then you can raise your hand. I mean, from France? Germany? I know about Italy? Italy? <laughs> Somebody from Monaco? Any other any other nationalities? China. 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 How did you come up with the idea of these seminars? Um, we were like I said, we were looking for something to do together, and um, you know where we combine you know everything that we do, the wine, the art, the photography, and the books, and then just to have a central theme around it because all of these things represent newness to us because you know as you know her background is in acting and you know her background is in business and my background is in journalism and um, so we're each kind of embarking on a new avenue you know going down a different road and uh, it just seemed to just kind of come all together yeah and I think it was in question um, I think for everybody but for me a lot was uh, what made you make this decision to... This is elevator music. When the wine opens, we'll turn on something else. Beyonce. Um, a lot of people ask, why did you um, stop acting or take a break? And so it was, a, it was a question that came up a lot. So, and there were so many different reasons. But it was um, one of these things where it had, I realize now when I look back, and it had been in my head for a long time that I wanted to make the change. I just didn't know how it was going to manifest itself. Well, I think in, for me it's, it's a bit different. I'm not so sure if it's about a reinvention or is it just perpetual invention. <laughs> Uh, the story of the wine is probably 15 years ago when I started to work, and um, probably even more. I mean, my first so my first souvenir about wine was when I was about 10, and I was spending vacation with a grandmother who was really liking wine and came. And for those of you who knows about wine, she opened a bottle of Cheval Blanc, which is one of the most prestigious bottles. So I was 10, and it was good, but I did not realize. So it's only when I turned something like 20 that I say. This is a very, very nice first of the wine. And, uh, is that a form, is that? <laughs> and um, then okay, I did some um, I mean, life science uh, study and business and I started to work and it happened very quickly that I could be close to the winemakers and to the wine growers. And uh, so I got to, to learn on the job, uh, what about, about wine making, about wine tasting, and always I say, look, I like this, I like this life. Um, and on the business point of view, it's all very good that you know what your, your clients are doing. So that's how it started. And it started very small. It started with a couple of uh, vines and making the, my wine in the garage, which was really not a very good experience. <laughs> and uh, somebody completely failed, and I said, okay, no, this is it. And that's probably where there was a big decision. I said, oh, you stop this because this is just vinegar, or it's just pizza wine, and you don't. Or you make it big. And that's how I finally decided to make it big. And that's about the time that when we met. And I say, and I, to, I, I sent her an email. I said, look, you paint large format. I have a challenge for you. Can we do something small? <laughs> on the wine label. And I said, yeah, sure, no problem. So that's how it started. I, I still straddled uh, both worlds for about a year and a half after that. And I had a wonderful studio in downtown LA, and then I had another studio in Silver Lake. And then sometimes I would be like looking at scripts in the Silver Lake studio and I noticed that I started to not want to read the script so much and I was on the canvas more and then I was like, okay. And then I just called my manager who's been with me for a while and a good friend and I said, I, I think I need to only paint 
And it was the first time in my life, after 20 years, I'd ever said that to anyone because I started acting in, like basically a teenager. So to say, I, I think I'm really gonna pull, pull back. And that break was really liberating for me. And I, I think that's a big step when you're making these decisions is you can say yes to all the things you wanna do, but I actually was starting to say no and so to the other thing and that was, that's, that was hard. That was scary. That's the scariest part. Entertainment was really, really cool for a little while, and then I just started to become sort of disenchanted with the whole process. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into all the reasons why, but it, it's, you know, people look at it and think it's very glamorous, and on one level it is, but on quite a few other levels, you know, if you're a real writer, if you're a real artist, it's like, what am I doing? You know, writing about stuff that nobody really cares about. And, you know, I'd gotten to the point where I interviewed Julia Roberts ten times. I had nothing else to ask her. And what I wanted to say that there are two things that were uh, important. First of all, when you want to change or when you want to reinvent or... I mean, you, you need a certain level of passion. Because this is, this is not an easy journey. And what is very so interesting, you have to take the decision and jump. And what is extremely difficult to juggle with this, you have to stay extremely focused on what you want to do because this is where you want to go. But on the same time, you have to stay extremely open because you you know where you want to go, but you don't know exactly all where you are going to go. Ce qui était intéressant, quand ce qui est intéressant dans la peinture sur sur corps, c'est d'abord c'est plus un exercice solitaire parce qu'il y a quelqu'un et ça permet ça a permis de faire un peu le lien avec ce que que Laurel a vécu dans, dans sa, sa, sa carrière de film, de film et, et de pouvoir faire bouger et de pouvoir capturer un moment et, et dans ce cas-là ça devient ça devient presque une sculpture. I think it is just inviting everyone for, to your New Year's Eve party in French. You know what these French people are saying, huh? You know what I'm just saying? Do you feel like you're in a place, it's for all three of you, do you feel like you're in a place where you're living your dream? Um, living part of it. I actually never did really want to do a book um, because I thought doing a book meant um, actually writing a book, a novel type of thing, and you know, I was never really interested in that. But um, now, because I've done these two, um, I am kind of interested in doing something a little bit more narrative. And so I've got that idea kind of percolating in my head. But um, I think, you know, I just spoke about my ultimate dream, and that is to travel the world and shoot it. So, um, you know, I may be a couple of years from that. And maybe six months from now, who knows? So I'll, you know, I just have to see how it goes, but um, it'll happen. So, um, you know, hopefully sooner than later, because I thought when you said 10 years, I said, shit, I'll be 65. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I want to be like traveling around the world at that point, but uh, sometime before I turn 60. Um, for me, no. I, I, I feel like um, lots of incredible doors have opened and um, I feel I'm just, I feel very similar to how I felt when I first entered the film world. Um, super, super wide-eyed and super, super excited and super, super passionate. And that's what I was looking to feel again. So I'm at the beginning of all that and, um, and I'm also raising two daughters. So I feel um, I'm still working on mm -hmm. that dream. Yeah. yeah. I don't know, it's a difficult question, because as I said, projecting yourself, as Nikki said, I was also thinking, okay, I'm getting older. Um, for me, I'm, I'm pretty in a good place. I do what I like, uh, and it's not about dreaming, it's about enjoying the moment. And it's, this is this, so, and, so I, I'm not projecting myself to something. It will come, and we will see, but enjoying the moment, enjoying this moment, for example, which is... Uh, my favorite motto is, when is the last time you did something for the first time? 
So that's that's a kind of, this is my dream. So okay. just make sure, make sure that when you don't want to do something, just just jump, just do it, and that's it. I'm going to hire them to clean my house. <laughs> you know, uh, people have been asking um, if we're going to, you know, do this again in other cities, and it's, you know, something we're considering, something we're talking about. It's kind of hard to make everyone's schedules gel, and uh, you know, this just happened to work out for us. So we'll see. What about going on the tour, doing this? <laughs> Yeah, well, <laughs> we'll see. I mean, um, you know, personally, I think it's a good idea. It's a great idea. Um, and I don't mind hanging out with these kids for a few days. So we'll see what happens. You know, invite us. One of the things very important in, in, in the dynamics between the three of us is that we do, we all three do something extremely different. But, and this is something that is important in, in the process of change or process of process or reinvention is that to be surrounded by people who are not necessarily in the same field as you but can understand and then they can listen to you and can help you and can reflect with you and this is something that is happening happen quite quickly between the three of us so that's that's a common, something which is not a project but this is in common between and it's important to, to to help the other to grow to help the other to see what is happening and, and uh, and I think this, this is quite useless. I agree with that. And um, I think in, in, in that, you know, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses, and um, Isabel's got this great business mind when you're ready. Right. And, and I think we tend to have more of the artist brain, <laughs> talk about, you know, and, um, and I'm terrible. Like, I, I just get really lost in what's going on in the studio and all of that. And it's so wonderful to have friendship and have support network and have someone you trust that you can say, hey, does this seem right? Or is this a good decision? Or what do you think about this business decision? Or, or I had an idea, but I'm not sure if it's gonna work. And I, I think um, to be able to bounce that off your support network and uh, off someone that understands business in a much more complex way. And um, I have very much of an artist brain. Not, not to say that I'm not instinctually savvy in business, but just to, Sometimes I don't pay attention to the details. And I think that's very common for a lot of artists, don't you think? Yeah. And I think what also helps us is that, um, you know, I'm very good at networking. So, you know, I'm at a party, you know, last weekend or the weekend before. <coughs> She's and, asking me from the party, like, yeah. this is great. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, oh, I just met somebody who can help both of us. Yeah. You know, and... <laughs> Because I'm, if I'm in a situation where there are a lot of artists or curators or people that run museums, I'm always dropping this name, you know. And if I'm in a situation where I'm at a cocktail party, you know, I'm like, hey, my friend makes this, hey, friend makes this wine. Or if, I, if I'm at a restaurant and I know the owner, you know, I'm like saying, hey, you might want to try this wine, you know, and sending her an email saying, hey, connect with this person. So, you know, it's, it's a matter of, you know, us just kind of helping each other out in our separate endeavors and trying to, uh, you know, get the person to the top of the heap. Have a good time. Kelly, come on, wait for the USA. Time. USA. 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 Mickey Turner, USA. 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 Sorry. Are you talking to me? Yes. So what do you want to know from me? How did you think it went? I think it went it? great. It was a great afternoon. <laughs> I mean, right. very different group, yeah. but great. Yeah. All right. Yeah. How about you? Did you have a good time? Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. It was um, very interesting, instructive. Okay. All right. And what was your favorite part? Mickey Turner, right? Mickey Turner. <laughs> <laughs> and I will adopt you. Mickey, I will adopt you. Oh!